All right, why don't we go ahead and get started? Thank you everyone for taking time out of your day to attend this month's Thirsty Thursday webinar. It is on the topic of Black <laughs> and is featuring Florian Devil with Sika Corporation. Florian is the business development manager for Sika Corporation located in Lakewood, New Jersey. He has 15 years of experience in the industry, including engineering and sales positions at Seekit's headquarters in Switzerland and at Seekit Corporation US. He has been a key resource for advanced design of building facade elements and is highly skilled in the area of structural glass and silicone applications. He is a graduate of Technische Universität Dresden in Germany in structural engineering. Florian, I'll let you take it from here. Thank you, Sarah, for the introduction. Um, our topic today is uh, glass embedding new design considerations for frameless glass railing. And uh, I want to start with uh, three statements underlining the importance of frameless glass railing. Transparency and safety are essential for every unique stadium or shopping mall experience. All glass railings and partition boards made of laminated safety glass are an important part of this concept. Balconies are considered as social connectors in design of modern high-rise buildings. It's important to make the railings neither a fence nor a barrier. Transparent all glass railings help connecting with the outdoor and with the neighborhood. Daylight autonomy is an important criteria in the evaluation process of LEED certified buildings. Frameless glass railings help improving daylight gains of modern facades as well as safety and comfort of balconies at the same time. NGA issued uh, one GIB summarizing important rules for use of laminated safety glass in glass railing systems. So both ASDM and uh, IBC define guards and guard rails basically as protective railing systems close to openings or outer edges to minimize risk of accidental fall to lower levels of a building. There are uh, some rules uh, which have to be taken to account working with glass railings. And uh, there is, uh, first of all, ASTM E2358 as a specification standard for glass railings. There is ASTM E2353 as a test standard, the test method standard for glass railings. There are ASTM C1172 and ASTM C1048 as product uh, specification standards for laminated safety glass and for heat strain and fully tempered glass used in um, architectural applications. And uh, all that uh, technical regulations are covered by International Building Code um, from 2015 and 2018, where uh, specifically Section 2407 is referring to glass railings. I want to summarize some important points mentioned in um, IBC um, International Building Code from 2015 and section 2407. Um, and there it's required to have laminated glass um, for use in handrails, guardrails, and guards. Glass types must be fully tempered, laminated, or heat strengthened laminated. Laminated uh, glass must comply with CPSC. 16 CFR 1201 category 2 or ANSI Z97.1 uh, class A. The differentiation between both of those safety glass standards is um, uh, summarized in GIB FB0806 from, from NGA. Furthermore, uh, there's a minimum glass thickness of a uh, quarter an inch required. The panels and their support system should be designed to withstand the loads as specified by the code. A design factor of four must be used in designing the glass. Top rail is not required if a laminated glass is compromised of two or more glass lights having equal thickness and only then if the system receives approval from the building official. In windborne debris regions, infill glass and glass balusters must be laminated and comply with safety glass standards. Um, 
the GIB of NGA, uh, focusing use of laminated safety glass in glass railing systems also highlights uh, some other important points, especially compatibility and uh, appropriate support for laminated glass units. And uh, here I was want to uh, um, mention uh, uh, that section uh, too. When a system is wet glazed, it is important to verify compatibility of the cork, grout, blocks, and sealant used in contact with the laminate in the layer. This is especially important in exterior applications where moisture and expansion rates can impact the system. Traditional methods of setting monolithic glass in railings such as cement-based grouts may be incompatible, incompatible with laminated glass. Bolted and clamped systems must be designed and installed properly to avoid overstressing the glass around the points of contact. So those points are just summarizing um, um, very important um, issues in, in design and installation of glass railings. And those uh, points will be also discussed more in detail uh, on the next slides. And that uh, leads us to the topic of appropriate and compatible support of frameless glass railings. Um, and here it's I mentioned that also already in the statements before there's a growing importance of frameless total vision glazing and, and glass railing. It's also called postless design and uh, that means that we have uh, a glass unit which is embedded at the bottom edge into a base shoe and the base shoe is uh, structurally fixed to the building structure. Based on the specific design requirements and uh, architectural demands uh, those systems can be con uh, can be built out of uh, flat, bent, rectangular, trapezoidal, horizontal, or inclined glass units. There uh, is a differentiation between uh, two common installation methods, like um, dry glazing and wet glazing. Two examples for those fixing methods. So mechanical fixation is basically representing um, the dry glazing system. Uh, mechanical fixation is a quite popular technique. Um, you usually need a specific base shoe uh, and uh, in combination with a specific glass unit and there's uh, a need of uh, a specific, specific set of blocks, shims, and gaskets uh, to install the glass unit into the base shoe. Here it's uh, uh, very important that the base shoe is uh, perfectly aligned on the building structure on, on, the, uh, on the floor um, that, uh, because the dry fixing system itself is, is not able to uh, accommodate too much tolerance. Another point uh, which has to be taken into account and to, uh, to be considered is water accumulation in the system. So there's, uh, uh, there's several cavities left in the base shoe uh, and that requires, especially for the outdoor application, um, to have a, a suitable drainage system and that drainage system has to be maintained over the life cycle of, of the glass railing. Um, Mechanical fixing systems also bear the risk of concentra concentrated pressure applied to the glass into the inner layer. There is also a traditional embedding system which is based on cementitious grout, and that embedding system already enables um, the combination of customized um, of customized U channels with uh, every kind of glass units. Um, Tolerance can be accommodated by by the uh, liquid applied grout, um, but here we have to take we have to take care that there is uh, compatibility between uh, the uh, used grouting material and the glass interlayer um, is 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 given and proven. Um, alkaline attack on the glass can cause um, glass corrosion, and um, cementitious grouts also tend to be very rigid after curing, um, and that can increase the, ris the risk of glass breakage due to peak stress and constraint forces. So just to go much deeper into the detail, if we 
talk about mechanical fixing systems, we always have um, the situ a situation of inconsistent fixing. Um, mechanical fi fixing systems um, are usually based on, 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 on puncture stress, concentrated stress caused by uh, rigid materials, and, and this is also causing peak stress into the base shoe and, and uh, the glass materials. It uh, mainly increases the risk of glass breakage for, for the glass unit itself, so that requires that concentrated stress um, is uh, um, comprehensively analyzed uh, in the verification of, of um, the glass railing system and that uh, requires also an increase of glass resistance. Increase of glass resistance can be achieved by using uh, higher, uh, high st uh, by using stronger glass types uh, or uh, by uh, increasing the glass thickness. Furthermore, uh, local stress peaks or local concentrated stress can uh, cause um, local relaxation of, of the glass interlayer the laminated glass interlayer, and that can co uh, get the, the glass unit loose into the system and uh, could require some further um, maintenance uh, effort. Another topic is uh, the combination of glass units in a railing system with very rigid grouts. And here on the picture, uh, you can see glass breakage observed in a project in New York where a glass unit um, in a rating system was installed with uh, epoxy-based grout during uh, outdoor summer conditions. And uh, glass breakage here occurred uh, already during the first winter. So uh, here it was reported uh, a temperature range between minus 20 and 120 degree Fahrenheit between uh, winter and summer. And uh, that, uh, just underlines uh, the different risks you have uh, in an outdoor system and you have to accommodate uh, also by, by supports and that is this thermal expansion between glass and aluminum uh, channel. So uh, any rigid material would not be able to accommodate the, uh, the dilatation between the two different materials. Um, the extreme hardness of uh, the grouting material can cause peak stress or even uh, or just uh, higher uh, stress impacts on, on the glass unit. Um, Epoxy-based grouts usually have uh, a very strong adhesion to, uh, uh, to various uh, substrates, to pr so producing here a strong adhesion between the base aluminum base shoe and, and the glass just increases the risk of constraint forces and of uh, uh, additional stress and uh, risk of breakage for the glass unit. Um, Epoxy-based two-component systems have, uh, can have a, a quite a, a quick cure, um, especially at uh, hot summer conditions. Uh, it could be difficult to um, fill the base shoe consistently. An inconsistent filling, again, could apply uh, concentrated uh, stress to, to the glass and inconsistent filling, uh, leaving some cavities in, in the base shoe could also be at the risk of collecting water, and uh, that water can attack the interlayer, um, and frozen water uh, expanding into the system can even cause glass breakage. On that slide, um, um, I'm showing you some pictures of a laminated glass unit embedded into a cement uh, cement-based grouting system at outdoor conditions. And this, those pictures um, um, we got from interlayer suppliers and uh, are quite common in the field. So um, what happens here, we have uh, a cementitious grout. The cementitious material is not compatible with the laminated glass interlayer. And the uh, cementitious filling is also uh, porous and it's absorbing water at outdoor conditions. It's absorbing uh, liquid water quite quick and it's releasing the water very slow. So that means that the laminated glass edge is exposed to permanent wet conditions, causing that uh, strong um, uh, discoloration of, of the interlayer here. So summarizing that uh, um, facts mentioned before um, leads us to a bunch of different challenges we have to 
deal with in the field. Um, there's a new standard. There's new standard requirements um, really forcing um, to use laminated glass units in uh, in, in rating projects. Um, there's a higher demand on structural and post-breakage performance, um, and uh, those higher demands also require a stronger uh, support for, for the uh, freestanding glass units. There's uh, um, the awareness of uh, taking care on material compatibility. There's a demand on uh, durability under various conditions, especially for outdoor installations. And of course, there are also demands on um, on efficiency and on, on the installation uh, process, requiring fast setting and easy repair of those glass units, as well as a certain freedom of design um, to deal with uh, architectural and structural demands. A couple of years ago, we started looking into the topic and uh, find the material, a polymer-based material, uh, which can deal with all that uh, demands in the market. And uh, here on that diagram, you can see the properties uh, um, of different uh, polymer-based materials used in, in the construction industry. And there is a group of uh, very elastic materials, the one-part sealant, silicon PU-based uh, sealant materials. Uh, those materials would be too, uh, too soft uh, for such an application, and the one-part materials also need to have access to air humidity for curing, so they are not uh, suitable for filling uh, deeper channels uh, with that kind of material. There's a group of uh, epoxy adhesives. I mentioned that already on one of the slides. Uh, a very strong technology, but uh, most probably uh, too rigid to uh, provide an appropriate support for, for glass units. So in between, there's uh, the group of um, two-part polyurethane adhesives, um, we can use, we can very good modify for different uh, um, properties and different demands. And uh, those materials provide a very strong support and uh, a controlled flexibility at the same time. So the detail uh, we recommend uh, for projects, for glass rating projects, uh, is quite easy looking like this. So we want to achieve have a, an appropriate support, a strong support. We want to have, um, uh, we want to expose the laminated glass edge to a compatible material, with, which is our polymer-based um, <clears throat> grout. And we want to provide a waterproof system to keep water out of the system because that is also uh, one of the risk factors for incompatibility and for discoloration of the laminated glass in the layer. And at the same time, this polymer-based grout uh, need to provide a certain efficiency or a fast uh, application process and curing process for, for the installers. So we have our aluminum base shoe. The uh, laminated glass unit is set into the base shoe and uh, adjusted. Then the remaining gaps are uh, fully filled with the two-part self-leveling uh, polymer-based materials, strong material with appropriate flexibility to uh, not produce any uh, concentrated stress in the glass unit. And then uh, after curing of that two-part material, um, it's covered with a cap joint uh, with a weather sealant to guide any kind of liquid water away from the base shoe and uh, to provide also um, the, the required color match for, for every specific project. So we have a self-leveling polymer-based technology with appropriate hardness and flexibility and the two-component system for uniform, controlled, and fast curing. Um, Zika provides a, a system of materials for, for every specific need uh, for, for those balustrade applications, and uh, all of that systems are compatible, all of that uh, components of the system are compatible materials, um, but somehow dedicated to, in, to a specific installation process, like Zika Glaze GG735, um, it's a self-leveling material for horizontal application. Um, Zika Force 7722 is a, a non-sec material for inclined application um, and only for pump-driven application. And Zika Force 7780 is a, a material um, filled in cartridges for smaller projects, smaller applications, fuel fixes, and repair. 
Um, the point for, uh, here for that material is it's very fast queuing due to the fact it's applied out of a cartridge in one shot. You can use it a very uh, quick queuing time and it en enables the installer, uh, especially for smaller projects, to complete um, um, the installation of uh, one or, or a few glass units uh, without any waiting time. And of course, uh, we need uh, a weather sealant for the cap joint and our materials uh, used as part of the system have also proven compatibility with uh, all kinds of PVB and ionomer interlayers. So what we have to consider is an appropriate design. Um, uh, our recommendation for, um, let's say, recommendation on the safe side is uh, to use the clearance between base shoe and glass unit of uh, minimum uh, three-eighths of an inch. We recommend to have a minimum coverage of glass bite in the bottom edge um, of um, age over uh, of 10 percent of the height of the glass unit but not less than three inch and uh, we recommend to have a depth of the silicon top joint finish of a uh, quarter to three eighths of an inch of course uh, those details can be optimized but then uh, we really recommend um, that every uh, optimized and customized uh, solution for for those systems is verified in a mock-up application and in, uh, due to performance testing in advance. Um, we need to have compatible products and the compatibility with uh, the laminated glass interlayer is tested uh, or was tested in uh, um, artificial aging cycles um, over uh, 21 weeks in a, uh, in a climatic chamber at a temperature range between minus 20 and plus 140 degree Fahrenheit high humidity uh, and condensation and uh, during that test phase the laminated glass uh, was in full contact with the grouts and, and with the sealants. We also performed the thermal expansion tests uh, over uh, this uh, alternating cycles over more than one year to uh, see if uh, the flexibility of our grouting materials is uh, good enough to uh, to avoid glass breakage and to accommodate the uh, a thermal dilatation um, um, between uh, base shoe and, and glass unit. And of course, I, I want to summarize this. Uh, we achieved a good compatibility with, uh, with all common interlayers. And uh, part of our concept is also to have a waterproof embedding system to keep any kind of liquid water out of the base shoe and uh, to um, work also with compatible. Uh, weather sealants on top of the grouting system. Another point uh, I, I uh, briefly mentioned is um, the installation process and uh, the efficiency of um, the grouting process itself. And here um, we, uh, we are proud to have a collaboration with an equipment supplier uh, who designed a dedicated pump and a specialized pump for the two-part uh, materials we offer for the grouting process. And uh, that also increase um, the, uh, the efficiency of, of, of the system itself. So to find out uh, how, how much uh, savings or how much more productivity we can gain uh, with, uh, with our um, polymer-based system and then also in combination with the pump system, uh, we made a survey with uh, those for those companies uh, working with our system and also having experience with the traditional applications. And uh, we created just a, a case a, for the installation of 1,600 linear feet of glass railing, including glass planting, grouting, and cap joints. Um, if you work with a three-man crew, so what is the uh, labor time you would, and the effort you would calculate for an application like that? So um, in average, we got a response that for traditional cementitious grout systems, manually mixed and applied, they would calculate uh, 20 work days for that 1600 linear feet. That is the productivity of 80 linear feet per day. Then using a polymer-based uh, grouting system, just manually mixed in a bucket with a, with a, a drilling machine and manually applied to the base shoe, they would calculate eight work days, which is a productivity of 20 linear feet per day. And here uh, they, um, 
those uh, experts saw the advantage in, in the easy mix and self-leveling uh, of the product and uh, also that it could be applied from one side uh, and it uh, leveled to the other side of, of the base shoe. Um, they didn't need to have access to the other side. Um, they also confirmed the full cure of the polymer base system after 24 hours and then it could already uh, be covered um, with, a, with a sealant cup joint. And then uh, last but not least, the polymer based grouting system with uh, um, uh, with a mixing machine and spending machine. So now they don't need to uh, produce a hand mix. Uh, both components, the A and the B part, are poured into the machine and they are automatically mixed by the uh, pump in, in the correct uh, mixing ratio and they are applied through a static mixer directly into the base shoe, having the perfect self leveling properties. And here, um, those companies calculated. Um, four work days to complete the 1600 linear feet of glass railing. That, uh, is, a that is a productivity of 500 to, uh, 400 to 500 linear feet per day. And it also, they also confirmed um, a re reduction of waste material by 60%. So the pump supported uh, mixing suspending um, reduced uh, material waste. It's a cleaner application and a much faster application than uh, the manual application. So that's uh, the end of my presentation. So we covered uh, several points. We covered uh, appropriate support. We covered compatibility with laminated glass interlayers, and we covered the productivity of the uh, installation process itself. Thank you very much. Thank you, Florian. We received one question through the, the chat, and then once we address that, I will unmute everyone in case you wish to share your question live as well. The question received um, is, are there any standards yet for how much loading a broken light has to resist? The concern being that a building occupant might fall through the opening because of the um, lack of strength of the broken light. Wouldn't it still have to resist the 50 pounds per linear foot and 200 point load to protect someone on the occupied side of the installation? Um, that really depends on, on on the project and on the local conditions. Um, so usually for for those projects where um, the new grouting system was used in the past, it was always based on a performance mock-up. So um, the, the loading conditions for that specific project were defined in advance. In some cases, uh, it was also required to have some uh, missile impact tests or some uh, destructive testing for um, for those glass railings. and. That was uh, project uh, specific and system specific, always tested in performance mock up at once. And a follow up to that question um, what if the, the glass is already broken? Yeah. Okay. Um, if the glass is already broken, um, um, our partners uh, for, for those installations, they uh, observed a be better post-breakage performance. Uh, but then it's, it's always a combination of, um, of uh, the correct glass thickness in the layer um, with the supporting system and, and the grout. Yeah. But, uh, they observed uh, comparing uh, different systems with each other that they could uh, achieve the highest post-breakage uh, uh, performance uh, by using the polymer based grouting system. Okay, thank you. I'm going to unmute all of the attendees. So if you wish to ask additional questions, you can do so now. I have a question on the compatibility that you chose to do with the laminated products, specifically the interlayers. Did you work with multiple manufacturers or just just one? You work with uh, manufacturers. So we started already a uh, uh, collaboration of uh, manufacturers in Europe, so that this was uh, started uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, we went ahead with those testing. It seemed perhaps we got some feedback um, technically on the phone line on that one. Did did everybody hear the response? 
No. Okay. Barely. I'm I'm going to mute everyone for the moment because um, that seemed to help clear up the audio. Florian, do you wish to address that question one more time, please? Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. So uh, one more time, uh, we, we uh, performed uh, compatibility testing with uh, with various interlayer suppliers, and it was also not just a, a one-way uh, uh, test. It was not just done in our laboratories. It was also uh, done in, in the laboratories of uh, the interlayer suppliers, and they confirmed the results, so two-way testing. And uh, we started with that compatibility testing a couple of years ago in, in Europe and in our headquarters when we started uh, with the first projects uh, using those materials. And we went ahead with testing also with uh, local representatives in the U.S. market uh, for uh, a number of different projects and a number of different interlayers. Great. Thank you. Are there any additional questions? Yes. Is that, is that material, uh, your material, the Sika 735, compatible with the DuBont Sentry Plus polyurethane uh, structural laminated glass? Yes, it's compatible with, uh, with uh, Sentry Plus uh, in okay. the layer. I'm not sure if but I just as a correction, uh, Karari is the manufacturer of Sentry Glass. It is no longer a DuPont product. Okay, did not know that. Thank you. And it's not a polyurethane either. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are there any additional questions? Otherwise, thank you all for making the time again to attend today's webinar. Thank you, Florian, for the presentation. Uh, we have recorded this, so it will be posted on glass.org um, in the next week or so if you wish to view it again later. Thanks Thank you. very much. Bye. Thank you.